That's the cola. P-E-P-S-I. That's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi Cola presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy, calling Washington. Counter-spies, especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, the case of the Mexican Rancho, a counter-spy report to the American people, brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi-Cola, it's a spot, two full glasses, that's a lot. That's right, you heard what they said. Two full glasses of sparkling Pepsi from one big 12-ounce bottle. You're getting an extra glassful. And what a delicious glassful. The most refreshing, delightful cola that ever tickled your taste. You can't top Pepsi's tangy flavor. And that big, big bottle saves you money, goes twice as far. Pepsi's America's big, big favorite. And America's biggest cola value. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now, to Counter Spy. A few weeks ago, a swarthy-faced, steely-eyed chemist was in his laboratory in San Francisco. He was going through his mail. Suddenly, he stopped. There was a picture postcard. He read it. Here, Jensen, have been seriously ill and I'm going for a vacation. Won't you join me? Aunt Mary. Slowly, the chemist counted the commas, the periods, even the spacing of the writing. Then he picked up the phone. Tell Mr. Brown I'm resigning. There's serious sickness in our family. In a luxurious apartment in Chicago, a small, attractive, fiery young woman in a negligee was reading a picture postcard. Dear Magna, I'm not expected to live long. Want you with me, Aunt Mary? Well. Bert. Oh, I'm glad I caught you before you went to the bank meeting. The doctor just phoned me the result of my examination. He says it's definitely a breakdown that I must leave and get away from everything for a while. Yes, I'm packing. Well, as soon as I know where I'll be, I'll let you know, but for a while I've got to be alone. Chummy with you and Magna and I back together again. I wish you'd stop keeping us in suspense, Dresser. Well, you two acted very promptly on your postal cards. You say we're to stay on this train till we get to Mexico, Mr. Dressler? Yeah, that's correct, Jensen. But suppose right now we all take a look at this map of Mexico. Very, very interesting. Well, now I think I begin to understand. I saw an article in the newspapers, a um, new uranium deposit in Mexico. That's why I love you, Magna. Good intuition. Your training, Dresser. Remember, I'm here, too. Now, these fine black lines, uh, they're the mountains. Now, over here, right in the center of these mountains, this is a plateau, the Mexican city of Vitoria. Population uh, uh, too small even to be listed, huh? But soon, Victoria may be one of the most important cities of Mexico. Is the uranium deposit owned by the Mexican government or by whom? I'm not sure yet. But I believe the deposit may be on land owned by several individuals. Just how can we profit? Uh, what is there to sell a foreign nation? Information concerning the percentage of uranium or the method of refining the uranium or a contract with Mexico to ship part of the ore to other countries. If we handle this right, it could mean millions. 
Jensen, go up to the club car and order us all chicken sandwiches and coffee, huh? All right. Wouldn't you rather have a highball? You heard what I said, Jensen. All right, all right, all right. I have a premonition about Jansen, too. You're right again. Since we've worked together last, he has been drinking heavily. And one who drinks is apt to talk too much? It should be easy to dispose of him in Mexico by an accident. Now, you and I, uh, we must study this map of Mexico carefully. We will live in a little hotel in Vistoria. Come in, this is Peters, counter-spy plane one, bound for Mexico. Victoria is about 40 miles north of the uranium discovery. If you don't want to stay in Victoria, there's another town 40 miles to the south of the uranium field, La Festa. You and Mr. Hardy can get rooms there in a ranch house. That would be fine. For a while, we'll want to keep undercover. That's all. Now remember, Peters, I'm flying to Mexico at your request. I brought along this map of Mexico, Mr. Harding. I'd like to show you. The publicity that's gotten into the papers about a uranium deposit in Mexico has certainly started something. Hmm. What did the report from the Mexican police say about it, Peter? The report said that persons of questionable character were flocking to Vitoria. Vitoria, that's right here on the map. Mm hmm. Unless I miss my guess, foreign agents are swarming there like flies to molasses. <laughs> what are you chuckling about, Dave? For me? Yes, yeah, you. Oh, I, uh, I was just thinking of a funny story. You've got something up your sleeve. Somehow, Peters, I have a hunch. A hunch there are going to be some very interesting developments in those mountains within the next few days. Yeah, this mountain path is steep, Magna. The horse should worry, not me. Uh. How are you making it, Jansen? Personally, I... I'm frightened to death of a horse. Well, we're almost to the top. Then we can get a good look at the uranium deposit down there on the plateau. Come on. Get up. Come on. That's it, Jansen. The path is so narrow, you ride ahead. Oh. Now, Jansen, get ahead, Magna. Oh, ho, ho, ho there. He's far enough ahead. This path is very narrow and very steep and very rocky. Your intuition is uncanny, Magnet. Jansen knows nothing of a saddle. When we get to the top, get off and tell him you'll tighten the saddle girth. Instead, loosen it. The horse must be headed down this path. At the right moment, I will accidentally prick the horse with my knife. Jansen is at the high spot already. Uh, as soon as I get a good look at the location down there, I'll know how to operate. The United States will have secret agents down here, too. Undoubtedly, they're here already. The Mexican secret police. Ho, 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 oh, ho, boy. Oh. Say, the reports are true, all right. Look down there in the valley. Let me have those glasses, Jansen. Here. I'm going to get off and fix the girth on your saddle, Jansen. It's loose. How dangerous? Well, if your saddle slipped to one side, it would throw you on your head and under the horse's feet. Oh, mounds of dirt. Look at the size of the smokestack from that shack. And I can see high fences and armed guards. It looks to me like mining has just started. Yes, yeah, like the start of a tremendous operation. Huh. It could be one of the largest uranium operations in the world. Let me turn your horse's head around this way, Jansen. Uh, not the only ones who are down here to get information to sell to foreign countries. I've already recognized several other operators. Would you take your knife, Dresser, and cut off that strap in back of Jansen's horse? Yeah, surely. Why? It might flap and frighten your horse. This one? Yes. Look out! Look out! Stop him! Stop him! Stop him! He's swaying from side to side. There he goes. Stayed on longer than I thought he would. (laughs) 
Well, we'll take the path back on the other side of the mountain. That's why I told Jansen not to be seen with us. Bressler, who owns that land down there where the uranium deposit is? That's what I want to talk to you about, Magnum. Part of the land is owned by an American, a Harold P. Sturgis. Oh? He's expected to arrive in a few days. I want you to meet him and make him like you. I think that will be possible. We've got to use him to get into that carefully fenced deposit. We've got to get a look at the plans and reports in there. And if possible, we've got to get control of his land. Dave, I'm mad, boiling. I just saw one of the coldest murders, and I was helpless to do a thing about it. I thought you were up by the high cliff all day. I was, nestled comfortably in the boulders when a girl, a beautiful girl, and two men came riding up. A spy on the uranium field like we thought we would. Yes, glasses and everything. But this girl, she loosened the saddle girth of one of the men, got the horse headed down the steep trail, and then the other man pricked the horse with his knife. Oh. The horse ran headlong down the trail, and the saddle slipped. Killed him outright? The other two didn't go down to see, but there wasn't any question. After they left, I went down. Don't ask me anymore. You weren't near enough to hear what was said. No, I was a hundred yards away. I'm looking forward to meeting up with that girl. The man, too. I think you're going to have that chance by tomorrow night. Wonderful. Now, Peters, the Mexican police are cooperating to the limit. We've got the town of Victoria covered every inch. All the liquor glasses from the cafes are taken to the kitchens and immediately fingerprinted. Mm -hmm. Now, this file here, full of such fingerprints. And our Washington files show that many of these are wanted characters. How about pictures? Thousands of feet of film have been taken of all foreigners who've come to Victoria. I hope when we get through, we'll have an international rogues gallery. You said you thought I'd have a chance to meet this girl tomorrow night? As a result, Peters, of a dozen traps we've set. One trap I set with the Registrar of Deeds in Victoria. Now, supposedly, a young American by the name of Harold P. Sturgis. Uh-oh. So that's who I'm going to pretend I am. Yes. There's really no such person, but we've created him. Young Sturgis supposedly owns part of the valley where the uranium strike is. Now, several suspicious persons have already been to the Registrar of Deeds and inquired about that land. They've been told that Sturgis is expected to arrive momentarily in Vittoria to look over his properties. Have you made the reservation? Yes. For tomorrow. Oh? Now, let's make Sturgis a playboy. Not too smart. I've already gotten you a yellow sport jacket, loud slacks. Oh, brother. I think, Peters, you're going to see plenty of action. Back to Counter Spy in a moment. Pepsi Cola, it's the spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Lot more value, lot more zest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? More and more, among fellows and girls, among mothers and dads, you hear that sane and sensible question, why take less when Pepsi's best? No budget, no allowance ever had a better friend than tangy, sparkling Pepsi-Cola. Because one big 12-ounce Pepsi bottle gives you two delicious drinks. That's twice as much tangy taste, twice as much delicious Pepsi to go just twice as far. That's why more and more families say, why take less when Pepsi's best? Yes, families like yours and mine, families all over America, they're all saying, why take less when Pepsi is best? Pepsi Cola so delicious and each bottle makes two drinks. It is certainly the cola for the purchaser who thinks everybody's drinking Pepsi. Just compare it with the rest. So much more and so much finer. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Today, tomorrow, always get America's biggest cola value. Take home a carton of six big, big Pepsi bottles. Insist on Pepsi at the store, and say Pepsi at the fountain. Say Pepsi at the stand. Say Pepsi. Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? Now, back to Counter Spy, the town of Victoria, Mexico, and the bar at the Hotel Ciudad, where Peters of the Counter Spies is posing as a young playboy. Pardon me, I don't usually come into bars and speak to strange men, but uh, aren't you Harold Sturgis? 
I am, unless you want me to be somebody else. I think you're going to be a very interesting boss. Boss? Oh, excuse me, won't you sit down? Thank you. My name is Magna Lawton. And you already know mine. Yes, Mrs. Sturgis. You see, I'm a botanist, but I've got to make a little money so I can stay a few days longer and finish my work. That certainly is understandable. Well, I'm also a very good secretary, shorthand, typing. I thought that possibly while you were down here, you might need a secretary. The funny part of it is that I do need one. I need one badly. You mean you really could use me? Well, I'm here on business. Besides, I'm terrible at details. I've got letters to write, deeds of land to look over, and papers to examine over at the mine. You haven't asked me my price yet. What is your price? Ten dollars a day for a very efficient secretary and one who can be absolutely trusted. Is that too much? Definitely no. For the hours are apt to be quite irregular. Oh, then it's a deal. A very pleasant deal. When do I start? I'd like to have you start in about half a minute. <laughs> now you're making fun of me. But I'm really serious, Mrs. Sturgis. Honestly, when do you really want me to start? How about first thing well, in the morning? Well, uh, tomorrow's Sunday. I want to go to church first, and then I'll start. I can see you're a very sweet person, Miss Magna. And I know you'll be very trustworthy. Ah, Magnum. What's the latest with the Sturgis man? Sturgis is trusting me with everything. I've already been into the valley with him, right where the mining is going on. I know. I was watching through the glasses from the ledge. Can you get a sample of the uranium ore? I'm sure I can. Even better, he's going back to the main office tonight. He's going to look through the company records to decide whether or not to sell his land. The chance of a lifetime, Magnum. Use your camera. No, I'll take dozens and dozens of pictures of their files. Try to dope him so you can really do a job. And if that should fail? See that he meets with an accident. We've got to know what the files contain. I pride myself on being rather ingenious. I'll do something to him in the car before we even arrive at the plant. This road to the location is so rough. I don't see how you can see all the holes at night, Harold. Nervous, Magna? Oh, why should I be? Just that we're alone, a long way from town. I don't think I'd be nervous with you any place, Harold. How much farther to the office? Half hour. The office is right next to the mine shaft. I don't know whether to sell my interest in the land or not, Magna. Tonight I want to go through all the papers in the files. Well, you might make money in the end by not selling, but it's going to be very complicated being all snarled up in it, and you don't like details. That's just what I'm worried about. I have enough money. Why make more if it's going to become too involved? What are you doing? Here, take some. Chewing them? Mm-hmm. No, thanks. Not right now. Um, after we look over the reports tonight, you tell me whether you think I should sell or not. Chewing gum relaxes you. But I honestly don't... Oh, want... here, now stop being stubborn. All right. You're a persistent woman. You, uh, always get your way with men? <laughs> uh-huh. That's nice, isn't it? Well, doesn't the gum taste good? Sure it does. Only you tickle me so. You were more interested in a little stick of chewing gum than you were whether I should sell out. I'm really at heart just a woman, Harold. I have to have my own way. Complicated, Magna. You're not accustomed to a business life, Harold. This is where my secretarial work comes in handy. Now, those papers on the table over here. Original deed of ownership. Title guarantee. Surveys. Oh, excuse me. How long have we been working? About an hour. I feel groggy. Rest for a couple of minutes. Oh, if I rested, I'm afraid I'd fall asleep. Sometimes a five-minute nap just fires me right up. Put your head down on the desk. Try it. Well, I... I guess I've 
got to. Yes, that's the way. Harold? Harold? Hmm. The chance of a lifetime. yourself. Oh, Brother Will, I, she's poison. It's time to force action, Peters. Pretend to take her into your confidence and tell her what your plans are. When are you coming over to Victoria, Chief? This town is a hotbed of intrigue. I think I'll move over tonight. If we're going to start bearing down, there's no telling what'll happen. such an emergency message, Magnus. The American, Harold Stooges, he's decided to sell his land in the valley. What? Why is he so foolish? He's a playboy type dresser. He would rather have quick money now. We've got to buy that fool's land. I think he'd sell for $100,000. Then offer it to him. I'll buy it myself. No, I think he'd become suspicious. But two nights from tonight, he's going to hire the entire restaurant at the Hotel Ciudad to auction the land off. Who knows about his plan? Only us so far. Tomorrow night he will announce the auction. And those who wish to attend must leave a note in his hotel box asking for a ticket. This will be our opportunity, Magna. For perhaps a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars, we shall buy a property we can resell for millions. Harding, La Festa, Mexico, to counter spy field office, El Paso, Texas. Arrange to have two large transport planes available near the town of Vitoria tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Vitoria, tomorrow night, 9 p.m. That is all. Now, how are you coming with that list of applications, Peter? Well, here are the results, Dave. Oh. Eighty-four persons have written requests to me for tickets to the auction tomorrow night. Of these 84, we have wanted orders on 62. Our fingerprints on the applications, handwriting, known aliases, and so forth have been checked against our dragnet operation in Victoria? Right. All right. We'll consider these 62. See which ones we issue tickets to. Most of the big ones I want to arrest, so we'll give them tickets to attend the auction. The small fry we won't give tickets to. They'll return to the States and think we don't know anything about them. Now. Charles Dennis. Record... 1937, released from custody. No, no, Peters, no ticket for Dennis. Check. Nicholas Bernsdorf, record... Oh, Peters, this Bernsdorf we've been looking for for years, transportation saboteur. Yes, Peters, a ticket to the auction for Bernsdorf. And a specially engraved ticket to my sweet secretary and dressler, her real boss. certainly had a clever idea, Harold, renting this restaurant for your auction. I didn't realize how many people would show up, Magna. I never saw so many international characters before of you. They probably believe they're going to get a bargain when you put your ranch up for auction. What do you think you... Harold? Hmm? Who is that big man walking onto the middle of the floor? I believe that's Mr. Harding of the United States Counter Spy. Oh, I... I think I'll... Leave for just a minute. Wait a second. Attention, please. Your attention, please. Everybody in this restaurant asked for a ticket to attend this auction. Now, in order to conduct the proceedings with the utmost efficiency, all doors are locked and armed guards are stationed outside the doors. Now, gentlemen, and the few ladies present, I'd like to introduce myself, David Harding of the United States Counter Spy. We have been working here in Mexico with the consent of the Mexican police. 
You see, uranium deposits are very vital today, and it occurred to me that if a Mexican deposit were located, espionage agents of many countries, espionage agents both big and small, would come flocking to see what they could learn, accomplish, or sell. Therefore, we took some worthless ranch land out here, 50 miles from any large city, put a fence around it, a couple of old buildings and a smokestack. Then we gave out information that uranium might have been struck. We didn't add that it might have been, but wasn't. I'd like to ask my assistant, Mr. Peters, to stand up. You? You a counter-spy? That's right, Miss Magna. And you stand up, too. I'd like to remind you all we're not in the mood for fooling. Stand up. And now, Mr. Dressler, stand up. We have a record on every person in this cafe, and I am placing you all under arrest by the United States government for espionage. But you, Magna Lawton, and you, Carl M. Dressler, I'm placing you two under arrest for murder. No. No, no, not murder. The murder of whom, Mr. Harding? The murder of Lars Jensen. He fell from his horse. It was an accident. Tell them, Peter. I was hiding about a hundred yards distant. I saw you, Dressler and Magnus, set the whole murder. And I'll testify to send you both to the electric chair. Not me! Watch the window! (laughs) Dressler is dead. The rest of you. There's the window Dressler tried to jump through. There's the door. Planes are waiting outside to take you back to the United States. Anyone else wish to try the window? No? Then start walking for the door. When your friends drop in, be generous, but be thrifty, too. Serve plenty of delicious Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottle gives you not just one sparkling glassful, but two. Get a carton of six and serve 12 delicious drinks. Yes, Pepsi is America's biggest cola value. You get twice the tangy taste, twice the refreshment, twice the Pepsi. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Pepsi Cola, hit the spot, two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more zest. Why take less when Pepsi is best? Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station, for Counter Spy. Listen on Thursday for the exciting Counter Spy case of the Poison Peddler. The powerful underworld king with the strange laugh, the painted store window that led to a ripped jacket and a charge of murder, the secret document at a city hall that forced a former actress to give her best performance. Be sure to listen on Thursday, day after tomorrow. To the case of the poison peddler on Counter Spy. Tonight's Counter Spy program originated in New York, was directed by Ted Corday, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer with music by Jesse Crawford. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi Cola. Enjoy some Pepsi ice cold tonight. Get up and go power. That's what you get from a nourishing breakfast built around Cheerios. Cheerios are crisp, crunchy little oat donuts, packed with good old-fashioned oat nourishment. Cheerios are ready to eat. They give you all the important vitamin B1 and minerals of oats, and a wonderful taste thrill besides. Try them. You'll soon be feeling your Cheerios. And for another half hour of exciting adventure, listen tomorrow night over this same network to The Lone Ranger.